Hello, everyone. Welcome to another webinar from our Rock in Action webinar series. My name is Guilherme Hanauer, and I am part of the technical team of Rock EDM. Today, we are going to make a short presentation about mixers and show how can we use DEM simulations to improve this equipment and operating conditions. In this presentation, we'll talk about mixing and blending. And our primary focus is to talk about powder mixing. Mixing is an operation that involves the manipulation of heterogeneous mixtures with the intent to make them more homogeneous. Powder mixers can be classified in three different categories. In diffusive mixing, Particles move randomly, typically rolling down when their container is rotated. There's no forced pattern in the mixer, such as the one that could be done by, the, by an agitator. V blenders, double cone blenders, and drums blenders typically fall in this category. For convective mixing, the movement of solids is forced due to a mixing tool or an agitator which defines a pattern within the convective mixer. The mixing tool moves large groups of particles, splitting the bulk of particles and thereby achieving mixing. In this category, the mixing time will usually be shorter than for diffusive mixers. Ribbon blenders, screw blenders, and pedal mixers are some of the examples of equipment from this category. In shear mixing, a mixing tool at high speed is used to make groups of particles slip between each other. Such shearing forces can be efficient for granulation when the mixture has some undesirable agglomerates that should be broken to achieve good mix. Rotating drums and plowshare mixers can be fitted in this category. Now that we defined powder mixers and their different categories, we can talk about their industrial applications. For many decades, the primary goal of, of powder blending processes has been just to homogenize bulk materials. Nowadays, the same mixing technologies are used with the main objective of achieving efficient mixing at reduced cost and increased reliability. Such class of equipment is used in many different industries and have different shapes, types, and operating conditions. With Rocky, we can simulate several aspects of powder mixing, including the different powder materials and processes related parameters, as well as geometries, motions, and mixer types. In today's session, we are going to show how can we set up a DEM simulation and do some post-processing analysis in Rocky. We will begin importing the geometries of the mixer, then we'll set the rotor motion, configure material properties and materials interactions. Next, we create the particle groups to be used and set the material injection. Once the setup is done, we run the simulation, then we will show how to color particles by certain properties, such as the liquid mass. We will create filters to collect particles according to their materials. We'll analyze how much mass of liquid is contained on each of these materials. And finally, we will show how can we uh, evaluate the mixing efficiency. Okay, so let's start showing how uh, can we set up a simulation in Rocky DM for a mixing analysis? We can start giving this project a name. Next, we define the physics that we are going to use, such as contact models. We can then enable the modules that we'll use. And in this case, we'll use the liquid bridge model. Later on, we can import our geometries. In this case, we have only two geometries, and we need to save this project before starting the simulation. Another thing is to select the unit that was used to create this geometry, and now we can visualize our geometries. We can change some visualization options, 
such as changing the transparency of these geometries. Next, the next step here is to create an inlet surface, which is from where we are going to inject some of our particles in the domain. We define its center coordinates, its orientation, and its size. Now we are configuring here the motion frame that we will use for the uh, ribbon. And in this case, we are simply creating a rotation motion. We define its rotational speed. In this case, it will be 42 revolutions per minute. And once we create this motion frame, we link it with the geometry that will rotate. After doing this, we can check the motion to make sure everything is working as expected before running our simulation. Once we check that, we can move ahead and start configuring our material properties. In this simulation, we will have two different types of materials. So we will add another material in our setup. This other material will be for the additive that we'll add uh, on, in this mixture. Next, we define the materials interactions between the different types of particles that we have in the simulation. And here we configure the friction factors uh, between each of these materials. And now we can create our particle groups. We will start creating our dry powder particles. We define its size. And we can duplicate this particle group to create another particle group for the wet particles. Here we change its size as well. And after doing this, we can define the material injection. In this case, we'll use a volume fill for the dry powder. With the volume fill, we can inject all particles at once before running the simulation. And we simply need to define the seed coordinate for the region where we are going to inject these particles. We define the region where these particles will be injected. And we can go back to our 3D view to see this region. Next, we are going to use a continuous injection to inject the particles that are wet, the wet additive. So these particles will be injected from our inlet surface at a rate of 72 tons per hour. And here we can define the liquid mass that will be injected with the wet additive. This liquid will be exchanged between both types of particles. Once we complete the setup, we can run the simulation. And as we can see here, all dry particles have been injected at once before running the simulation. We can color these particles by particle group. And here we can see that we have the dry powder in blue and the wet additive in red. We can change a few other visualization options, such as changing the background color. And we can change the uh, particles uh, colors by a certain property. And in this case here, I am showing particles colored by the amount of liquid mass on each particle. As we move ahead in this simulation, we can see that the liquid mass has been transferred from the wet particles to the dry powder. Next, uh, we can create a filter to um, separate particles according to the particle group. 
So the first filter here, I am creating to uh, separate only the wet additive. I am going to create another filter to get the dry powder. And we can use these filters to evaluate the amount of liquid mass on each group. So we can plot this amount of liquid mass on each group in a time plot. And if we look here, the amount of liquid on the wet additive dec decreases as the, as the simulation progresses, and the amount of liquid on the wet additive decreases. The amount of liquid uh, mass on the dry powder increases, and the, and the amount of liquid on the wet additive decreases. We can also see that in a histogram where we can color, where we can create uh, these histograms according to the amount of liquid mass on each group. We can change some of the visualization options for this histogram ch by changing the number of bins, changing uh, the y-axis for the amount of particle mass, and we can change the limits of this histogram for a better visualization. If we move to the uh, first instance, we can see that all liquid is in one of the groups. And if we move to the last time step, we can see that the liquid mass has been distributed between both uh, particle groups. Next, we can evaluate the mixing efficiency by using Rocky's, um, Rocky's calculation capabilities. So we can use some statistical measurements to create indexes, such as the Lacey mixing index. And we can separate the domain in different bins. Uh, each of these bins will contain a certain amount of particles. And we can evaluate the liquid content and the types of particles in each of these bins. So to separate, to create these bins, we need to first define a region. And in this case, I am creating a cylinder that contains all particles inside the mixer. Once I create this cylinder, I just need to create an Eulerian statistic. I can define the number of bins that I want for my calculations. And after doing this, we have here the additive mass fraction on each of these bins of this Eulerian statistic. And by using Rocky's statistical analysis, we can evaluate the mixing efficiency by creating a um, calculation for the lacy mixing index, for example. And here we can see that once we get close to one, we have a well-mixed mixture. And with this, I will add here this demo. So this is just an, one example of the things that we can do with Rocky. Uh, with this type of simulation, we can drive engineering design and operating issues such as reduce mixing times. We can increase product quality to cold particles, for example, fuse materials, wet uh, these particles, find conditions to get homogeneous material distribution. We can observe real scale mixing and material behavior, optimize loading procedure, evaluate regions with material accumulation, obtain power required to propel moving parts, find forces on geometry parts, among other design aspects and operating issues. Thank you all for attending this webinar. I would like to remind you that we will have other sessions like this. We had 
uh, another session for conveyors and shoots. This one was for mixing. We will have others for separators, bucket elevators, packaging, mills, and others. I would like to invite you to attend these next webinars. And right now, uh, we will stay here for answering questions that you may have submitted in the Q&A chat box or on, in the chat box. Thanks again. There's one question here. Um, how can we simulate the position with Rocky? So with Rocky, we can have as many particle shapes uh, that we want to inject in a certain domain. We can um, simulate its conditions, its mass flow rates when injecting particles inside the simulation. And basically, the deposition of particles will be a result from the amount of mass of particles that you're injecting, uh, the particle shape that is being used in the simulation, and the material properties. So you can set all of this in Rocky, and you can simulate the position with, uh, for any type of powder materials. Another question here is, can we mix solid liquid materials in this mixture simulator? Yes, uh, we can, but uh, for depending on the amount of liquid that uh, is in the simulation, we might need to use a coupled simulation with a fluid dynamics solver. So uh, if, you, if the amount of liquid is self-contained in the particles itself, we can use a module like the liquid bridge model, uh, such as the one we used in this demo. But if the amount of liquid is too high, uh, if particles are immersed in the liquid, for example, then we would probably need to couple with uh, fluent, which is our preferred choice when dealing with uh, CFD coupled simulations. All right, I think uh, we have no other questions. Oh, sorry, there's one question. Is there a method or two to simulate very small size particles, micros or mm millimeters um, yes with rocky we can simulate any particle size uh, the biggest limitation when dealing with uh, dem simulations is the number of particles and number of contacts between particles so if you have very small particles like powder then you would end up with billions of particles and there's no hardware that can handle such types of simulations because they are very complex. What is usually done uh, in these cases is that we can scale up our particles using a model that is called coarse grain model. And with this coarse grain model, we can preserve the physics that are being used um, that happen in these uh, small particles, even if we use larger particle sizes. So we can simulate um, very small particle sizes as long as the number of particles is not incredibly high. All right, I think there are no other questions. We can end this webinar today. Thank you all for watching. I see you next time.